In this video, I'm going to be doing a broad overview of imaging of the kidneys. For more educational resources, like our HMP notebook bundle, check out medicalbasics.com. So in this video is just going to be a very general overview of the various imaging modalities that we have when it comes to imaging of the kidneys, specifically in ultrasound, CT, MRI, and nuclear medicine. So just to start it off, ultrasound is going to be kind of one of your more common ways that you can evaluate for any type of renal abnormality. And typically it's going to come in the flavors of you're going to be evaluating both the kidneys and the bladder. So those are pretty much the two areas that you're going to be evaluating on an ultrasound. So the benefits is a quite focused exam. So you really have to know that you have a renal issue rather than just kind of fishing for some problem. So no radi radiation, there's real time data. You also get evaluation of the vascular flow. You're going to be able to see whether or not the arteries potentially have some type of stenosis or thrombus or any type of elevated velocity. So you're going to have some real time data with that. The cons is if there's any abnormality outside the field of view or the field of interest, namely if you have some abnormality in your pancreas or your liver or, or anywhere else, you're not going to be able to see. The main uses are going to be probably the number one reason that you get a renal ultrasound, especially as an inpatient, is going to be for hydronephrosis, right? When you have a patient as an inpatient, new patient you're seeing, they have an AKI, what do you do? You get an ultrasound. And what you're really looking for is, is there any structural abnormalities that could be causing some abnormality that can cause you to have AKI, namely hydronephrosis? Is there some obstructing mass or is there some hydronephrosis that now is leading to this new AKI that can be fixed by whoever needs to go in, like, for example, IR? Other things could be things like cysts, stones, renal masses can also be evaluated or even picked up on ultrasound. Polynephritis is something that commonly is, is ordered or renal ultrasounds are ordered for polynephritis but in all honesty fairly non-specific exam usually it has to be fairly flagrant for you to actually have a positive study for polynephritis on an ultrasound so it's, it's actually much more difficult than you would think to diagnose polynephritis via ultrasound the next example is going to be a CT. And so CT has various pros and cons. The, the, the number one con I would, I would say would be there's radiation. And you also need to give contrast. The only time you wouldn't need to give contrast is if, say, for example, you're trying to evaluate for stones. But other than that, if you're interested in the kidneys, you're going to want to know with contrast. The benefits are, you know, you're going to get a lot more anatomic detail. You're going to be able to know, for example, are there any anatomic variants? You know, if there's a duplicated supply or whatever it may be maybe some type of pre-surgical approach. You have a renal mass, you want to see, you know, how much of the, is it involving the upper, middle, lower poles, or multiple? That can kind of guide your surgical management. Something that you wouldn't really be able to say with confidence with an ultrasound. It's fast, so in trauma, it'll be very useful. And you can also evaluate the ureters. In an ultrasound, really what you're only going to be getting is maybe an okay evaluation of the proximal ureters, and if things are really abnormal, the distal ureters, but really you're not getting a good detail anything in between or even all together so ct especially with an ivp for example is going to be much more useful in that regard so for example let's say you you were looking for some type of transitional cell carcinoma a ct is going to be a very useful exam because you'll be able to time the contrast so you can actually evaluate when contrast is passing through the region of interest renal artery or renal artery stenosis is another very common thing that you could be ordering cts for and it, it's it's beneficial to be able to evaluate for thrombus or any type of uh, stenosis that you may may encounter. So like I was saying, extra renal involvement is a, is a common use for, for CT. Trauma, pilo, is, is, it's much better on CT and also infarction, which was this was the case for. And most of the things that you can do with ultrasound, you can also evaluate at least to some degree with CT. MRI is going to be our next imaging modality. And really what MRI should be reserved for is lesion characterization. You're not going to be using this as your first imaging test. If a patient comes in for a trauma, it's not going to be the first thing you're going to do. If a patient comes in with a new AKI, it's not going to be the first thing you're going to do. It's really if you've done something else, you found something, or they have a very high suspicion for screening or, or follow-up, that you need to, to characterize something. The reason being it's very expensive, it's very slow. The patient needs to be very stable and hold their breath for four 
40 minutes to an hour. So it's not going to be something that a very critically ill patient will be able to tolerate. But the benefits is there's no radiation, there's a lot of specificity. Because we have so many different sequences, we can better characterize and tell you exactly, well maybe not exactly, but tell you a little bit more information about what the characteristics of say a mass would be. So those are kind of the two main purposes for MRI. In this example, we have an AML. We have the Indian ink artifact of this right upper pole lesion kind of showing that there's macroscopic fat that you, you wouldn't, you wouldn't necessarily be able to say with as much confidence in, in some of the other imaging modalities, although you would be able to at least infer it and then you could get an MRI to confirm. The next thing we're going to be talking about is nuclear medicine. So there's three, you know, three major types of nuclear medicine studies, that being MAG3, DTPA, and DMSA. You don't need to know any of the details of it. All you need to know is kind of what they're used for and how they're different, because they are quite different. The MAG3 is going to be your first one. It's going to be used for when you want to evaluate the collecting system. So things like obstruction, leak, renal artery stenosis if you gave Lasix, because it's a tubular secreting agent, unlike the others. So what that means is you can really get a good evaluation of the collecting system. The number one thing that you'll need to know with these studies is the convention. So actually it's the reverse of, you know, everybody always talks radiology right, radiology left. Actually in this situation, uh, our left is left and our right is right. And the reason why that's the case is because our camera is actually coming from the back. So don't get confused if you're reading a report and you're looking at it and things aren't making sense and you think we may have switched something. Actually, it's reversed from what we're typically used to, like for example, in a CT or MRI. So the right kidney is this kidney and the left kidney is this kidney. In this situation, what we're seeing is that the right kidney is taking up the tracer well, it's creating urine, and then it's excreting it as time goes on. And so by the end of the exam, which is at 1.5 hours, we're able to excrete all the, the tracer from the, the right kidney and into the bladder. The left kidney is different. The left kidney has poor uptake, right? It's much more delayed, and it also never excretes. And what we see is that probably there's some type of obstruction here that is not even getting past the renal pelvis. So this is probably some type of UPJ obstruction that's causing the left kidney to just retain all this tracer and, and not be able to excrete anything. Our next example is going to be a DTPA exam. And so this is going to be a filtered agent. What that means for you is that this is what we use for GFR calculation. If you want to evaluate for a GFR um, and get a more concrete number, this is the exam you'll be using. There's more details that, that you won't need to know if all you're doing is ordering it, but you can see essentially we'll be counting various counts. We'll put a little region of interest over the kidneys and we'll be able to calculate based off of how much radio tracer is in the kidneys at each varying time. And we'll be able to have a GFR calculation. DMSA is gonna be our last common nuclear medicine study for the kidneys. And the reason why this is very different is it binds to the renal cortex. So what this is used for is really we only see it in kidneys or we only commonly use it in kids for scarring and pilo. Really, you're trying to see if there's any areas where you're going to have less uptake. So in this situation, you have a very obvious kind of like wedge-shaped filling defect within the right superior, or sorry, the left superior pole. And in this situation, it's going to be an example of pyelonephritis. Be sure to check out our website, medicalbasics.com, for more educational resources like our medical ID cards. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more tips and lessons.